Summary of Heart of Darkness by Joseph Conrad The narrator talks about a night spent on a ship at the mouth of England's Thames River. One of the people on the boat, Marlowe, talks about when he was a riverboat pilot in the Belgian Congo. With the help of his aunt, who knows a lot of important people, Marlowe gets a job as a pilot on a steamship on the Congo River in Africa for a business called The Company. First, he goes to a city in Europe that he calls a whited sepulchre to visit the company's offices. Then, he goes to Africa and up the Congo to take charge of his ship. The company's offices are oddly scary, and on his trip to Africa, he sees so much waste, incompetence, negligence, and cruelty that it would be funny if it weren't so terrible. In particular, he sees a French warship shoot into a forest for no clear reason, and he comes across a grove where black slaves who have been mistreated go to die. Marlowe meets the chief accountant of the company at the outer station. He talks about a very interesting man named Kurtz, who is in charge of the company's inner station in the middle of the bush. Marlowe walks from the outer station to the central station, where he finds out that the boat he's meant to pilot recently sank in an accident. In the three months it takes Marlowe to fix the ship, he finds out that Kurtz is a man with great skills and good values who is set to move up quickly in the company. He also finds out that the man in charge of Central Station, the general manager, and his friend, the brickmaker, are afraid of Kurtz because he is a threat to their jobs. Even though Kurtz is said to be sick, Marlowe can't stop thinking about meeting him. Marlowe finally fixes the ship, and he, the general manager, and a number of company workers head upriver. Marlowe calls them pilgrims because their sticks look like the sticks that religious pilgrims carry. The trip is long and hard. Native drums beat all night, and there are snags in the river and thick fogs that make it hard to see. Just before they get to inner station, locals attack the boat. A spear kills Marlowe's helmsman, an Indian who was taught to guide the ship. At inner station, they meet a Russian dealer on the beach. He tells them Kurtz is still living but sick. As the general manager goes to get Kurtz, Marlowe talks to the Russian dealer and learns that Kurtz has made himself into a cruel god to the locals. When the general manager and his men bring Kurtz out of the station house on a bed, the natives, including a woman who seems to be Kurtz's lover, seem ready to start a fight. But Kurtz calms them down, and they go back to being part of the forest. The Russian sees that the general manager doesn't like him and runs off into the bush, but not before telling Marlowe that Kurtz ordered the attack on the boat. Marlowe finds Kurtz sneaking toward the Indian camp that night. Marlowe gets Kurtz to go back to the ship by telling him that he will be utterly lost if he makes the locals attack. The next day, the ship will leave. But Kurtz is too sick to make it to the end of the trip, so he gives Marlowe his papers to keep safe. The horror are the last words he spoke. How terrible. Marlowe thinks that Kurtz is making decisions about himself and the world. Marlowe also gets sick, but he gets better. He goes back to Europe's grave city and gives Kurtz's papers to the right people there. Kurtz is intended, who is his fiancé, is the last person he sees. She thinks Kurtz is a great man who is both smart and good, so she asks Marlowe to tell her what Kurtz said before he died. Marlowe can't break her beautiful illusions, so he tells her that Kurtz's last words were her name. Marlowe stops talking on the ship in the Thames, and as the narrator looks out from the ship, the river seems to lead into the heart of an immense darkness. About the author Conrad was born in Berdychev, Ukraine, in 1857. Both of his parents died while his family was in exile in Siberia for planning against the Russian Tsar. When he was 17, he went to Marseilles and started working as a sailor. Eventually, he started sailing on British ships, and at age 29, he became a British citizen. Around this time, he changed his name to Joseph Conrad, which sounded more British, and put out his first short stories. He wrote in English, which was his third language after Polish and French. During the next eight years, Conrad worked as a sailor and kept writing. At one point, he was in charge of a steamship in the Belgian Congo. In 1894, he put out his first book, Almayer's Folly. He married Jesse George in 1896. He was quickly praised by critics, but he didn't make much money for a long time, 
and he and his wife both got sick. In the years just before and after the turn of the century, he wrote Heart of Darkness, 1899, Lord Jim, 1900, and Nostromo, 1904, which are his most famous works. Conrad died in 1924. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.